What does the word transform or transformation mean to you? A lot of TV programmes have a bit of a transformation theme to them. A decade or so ago, there were a number of programmes that transformed how people looked. Take a person, give them a haircut, add some makeup and some new clothes, and there you have a show. Popular more recently are the programmes like DIY SOS and CBBC's Dungeoneers, where a team of talented people take um, a room or a building and turn it into an amazing space. Then you've got Strictly, where most of the time we see celebrities transforming from shuffling around the floor to getting just a little bit better at it. But occasionally you see someone evolve into an amazing dancer. Even something like Ready Steady Cook has a transformation theme. What can the chefs turn that random bag of food items into? Jesus was, and is, in the business of transformation. Not makeovers or house renovations, but changing lives and changing the world. Bringing God's kingdom. He did that in so many different ways. Through the different miracles and healings that we read about in the Gospels. Through his death and resurrection through the way he related to the people he met. And although we might not even realise it, we need Jesus to bring transformation in our lives too. Because God wants us to have that life in all its fullness that I keep going on about. None of us will totally have life in all its fullness in this world. So there's always more transformation that can happen. There will always be more ways for God's kingdom to grow in our lives. We just have to want it and be willing to work with God, taking steps of faith. Our reading from John's Gospel today, where Jesus turns water into wine at a wedding, is just one of the many examples of transformation that we see in the Gospels. In fact, John's Gospel, which is full of miracles, or signs as he often calls them, ends with John telling us that there are so many things that Jesus has done that all the books in the world couldn't contain all the details. So why did John include this miracle? If John left out so many of the things that Jesus did, why tell us about Jesus turning water into wine? Well, firstly, we're told that this was Jesus's first miracle. It was at the start of his ministry and importantly, John tells us that it revealed his glory to it, to those around him. And because of that, his disciples believed in him. This was a moment when those around him started to understand who Jesus was. That Jesus was God's own son. God with them on earth. It's a bit like uh, the bit at the start of a film or a novel where you realise who the main character is and you get a glimpse of what's to come. Secondly, this miracle shows us that nothing is too big or too small to bother God with. When the wedding ran out of wine, Mary asked Jesus to sort it out. He initially dismissed her request, but he goes along with it and sorts out the problem. Why? Because it was important to his mum. He did something because he cared. It bothered her, so he did something about it. Although it might have seemed quite trivial as a miracle compared to dramatic healings and raising people from the dead, it was important to Jesus because it was important to others. We might sometimes feel that our stuff, our concerns, our problems don't matter to God because they're not as big as the stuff that's going on in other people's lives. Particularly over the past few months, I've heard people say that they don't really feel they can ask for prayer about something because it doesn't seem as important as all the other things that are going on in the world right now. They're not dying of COVID and they've not lost their job, so other people are worse off than they are, so they shouldn't really bother others or God with prayer. But God cares. God genuinely wants us to involve him with all the aspects of our lives. Nothing is too small or too big to take to God. If you wish that something was different in your life, 
Talk to God about it. He really does care. Thirdly, the miracle shows us how Jesus does things. He didn't just turn water into wine. He turns it into the best wine. We're not talking a five pound bottle of plonk. This was the very best. The steward comments on how unusual it was to save the best wine until after the not so good stuff has been drunk. A couple of years ago, we took the youth group to the Soul Survivor Festival. One of the cafes there sold one of the most delicious things I have ever tasted. A vegan and gluten-free chocolate orange tart. It was so good that I felt like I needed to concentrate on eating it because I didn't want to waste any of the experience. I would eat it by myself because I didn't want others to distract me from the taste I was having. I described it as the time as being what heaven must taste like. I've eaten a variety of free from desserts in the past and some of them are quite frankly a little bit disappointing. But that tart was genuinely amazing. God wants the best for us. Life in its fullness. Wine at its finest. Dessert at its yummiest. When God transforms something, it's really special. The transformation might not always be what we'd expect, but it is always good. I was speaking to someone recently who has terminal cancer and most of the time he's at peace with that. We'd be tempted to think that a miracle in his case would be the cancer going away but his view is not to ask why him but why not him? People sadly die of cancer and other things. For him the true miracle, the true answer to prayer is that he feels at peace about what's happening and he knows that eternal life awaits. Often we don't see transformation in our own lives or in our own communities or the wider world because we don't ask God to do something. Had Mary not asked Jesus to do something, we wouldn't have known about this first miracle. And even when we do ask, we sometimes don't get involved ourselves and we don't always let God do what needs to happen, what needs to be done for miracles to happen in our own lives and communities. The miracle of water into wine happened because the servants did what Jesus asked them to do. Sometimes it might feel safer to stay as we are. Even if we're not totally content with ourselves or our lives, We're comfortable enough not to risk asking God to get involved and change something. It might be a little bit too risky. But what could happen if we asked Jesus to transform the water of our lives into wine? What could life look like if we asked God what needs to be transformed in our lives so that we could have that fulfilled life that is promised? My challenge to us all this week possibly even a dare more than a challenge actually, is to pray about transformation. What would you like to be different? Big or small, what would you like to change in your life? Is there something that you feel is holding you back? What does God want to do for you? What does God want for your life? Talk to God about it. Dream with God about it. Let's ask God to bless us with amazing metaphorical wine or chocolate orange tart this year. Goodbye and God bless you.